No one's table is perfect because we're all fallible human beings. Yet I feel like in the TTRPG space, at least, I've been seeing it as a big counter argument to having problems at a table, a dismissive, well, you shouldn't be playing with people that you don't like. As with any of the discourse on social media, it's often reductive and used as a cruel weapon to create some sense of authority for the poster. It's the uh, get good of the TTRPG world. Are there folks around here? Today I'm gonna to be venting, I think, just a little bit on this idea of playing with people that you don't like and perhaps give you a different way to frame that conversation. There's a great TED talk by Andrew Stanton talking about the clues to a great story. I'll link that in the video description. But one of the things that I really keyed in on was this part where he mentions that we all live life conditionally. We're all willing to play by the rules and follow things along so long as certain conditions are met. Now I've spent a fair amount of time identifying what I enjoy about D&D and who I enjoy playing it with. I figured out that for my optimal play experience, I need three main things. The first of which is that I need to be able to speak because I'm super naturally soft-spoken and reserved and it's very easy to steamroll me or to constantly jump in and interrupt. So having a good group of players who will each give each other room to speak is a very important factor for me. At the same time, I need to be immersed and engaged. And if you're doing text-based D&D via Roll20 or whatever, I have the hardest time just sitting there and waiting for the so-and-so is typing to finish. I don't have a stream on in the background and I'm not playing my own music and I need to constantly be interacting with people at all times. That's what I enjoy. The last one is that when I'm GMing, I can't have people on their phones. This is one that gets tricky because you've got people who just literally can't maintain their concentration for that long. One way that we've gotten around this is by either to assign them a job like taking notes or being the cartographer or whatever, or by having those same people bring other stims that they enjoy. So knitting, for example, keeps the hands busy and it helps them maintain enough focus that I don't have to often repeat myself when trying to describe what the players see. If any of these things aren't true, it's not that I necessarily can't have fun. It's that the amount of fun that I'm having is not enough to justify the time that I'm spending to get it. I realize that that's a very return on investment, businessy, sort of approach, but that's the situation that each and every one of us falls into. You want high fun for your time spent, and the conditions to entertain that are going to be different for each and every person. Even Matthew Mercer from Critical Role and Brian Murphy from Not Another D&D Podcast or Dimension 20 have teetered on the edge of frustration, visibly, audibly, and despite having a professional organization, professional players who are also friends that they've known for years and years and years, no one is free of this and it's totally fine because they have enough fun and a lot of tables have enough fun. That's what your goal should be. If this video has been interesting, helpful or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. And if you'd like to support the new D20 fantasy RPG that I've been developing, or if you're just looking for an excuse to get out of Hasbro's ecosystem, go ahead, check out Distal at playdisrpg.com. Thanks very much, folks. Real signing off.